I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. First, let's start with the CPU performance. You might think it's just fine, but performance tanks when you look at areas with remotely anything dense on screen. On an R5 3600X, it looks like a heavy CPU bottleneck, with the frame rates dropping to the 60s on a port of a 14 year old game. And what's even more annoying is that the CPU is just chilling at 30% utilization. What the f***? Taking a closer look at the individual thread utilization, none of them are reaching over 50% utilization and a couple threads are barely doing anything. Here is a better look of the thread work thanks to Task Manager. The game just refuses to properly utilize the available hardware. It's not just a CPU bottleneck issue, it looks to be a full-on hardware underutilization issue. Thankfully, the game doesn't seem to suffer from any stuttering issues as far as I have seen during my time testing the game. So. My recommendation is to adjust your settings to target your minimum frame rates in those areas while shifting the load on the GPU more than the CPU and capping your frame rates if a variable refresh rate experience isn't smooth on your system. I would like to shed some light on a major performance bug I found by accident when connecting a Bluetooth controller performance tanks for no reason but if you connect it with a wire or disconnect it entirely, the performance regression disappears. This is a really major bug that needs to be fixed. So if you can spread the word, the community would appreciate it. Now let's get into the settings. Shadow quality controls the shadow resolution. For this comparison, I have used the low shadow softness option to better showcase the effect of this setting because it removes cascades that make it harder to show the shimmering that low, medium and high suffer from, while ultra doesn't. For the next setting, using shadow softness is a must in this game. Going from low to medium makes a small difference, while high looks a lot softer and masks the shimmering from the lower shadow quality options and CHSS looks very similar to high. To be more precise, CHSS seems to have more accurate shadows than high, especially on distant shadows, but it comes with a noticeable performance impact when GPU limited. I recommend high for the best balance, and only use CHSS if you have the spare GPU performance. Next up, is the shadow blend setting, which controls how cascade shadows blend. Having it off clearly shows where the cascades appear. Using dithered greatly blends the shadows where it's almost unnoticeable, and smooth looks very similar to dithered. Looking at the performance, it seems that smooth has a performance impact while dithered doesn't. For basically free GPU performance, use Dithered. The anisotropic level setting offers 4, 8, and 16 times options, and I could only tell a difference when pixel peeping that 16x had much sharper textures, while 4 and 8x looked the same to me. Use 16x here. For the anti-aliasing slash upscaling method, I have opted to compare the native options and not the quality options like you're used to seeing from me, because this game is rarely GPU bound. Going from no AA to FXAA just looks blurry, and FSR3 native AA looks really sharp and only suffers from slight shimmering on moving trees, while DLSS looks too soft in this game even blurrier than FXAA, although it doesn't suffer from shimmering on trees like FSR3 does, and during motion, 
neither FSR3 nor DLIA seemed to have any noticeable ghosting issues. It's extremely minor. Overall, for the first time, I can't recommend DLIA as the clear winner. It's tied with FSR3 native AA. Motion Blur, when enabled, has two options. The legacy option looks quite bad, very soft, and inaccurate, while the improved version still looks like it uses a low sample count, but otherwise, it looks like how Motion Blur should look like. All options perform the same. The geometry level of detail setting controls how far until the higher quality LODs for objects and structures are used. The game has terrible distant LODs, so using a higher option is a must. There is always a performance impact. It only becomes noticeable exactly when the LODs switch. In the worst case scenario, turning the setting down doesn't really increase minimum FPS just max this setting out. The terrain level of detail setting can have a noticeable impact to image quality, depending on the location and your distance from set terrain. I also found that this setting can affect the areas with lower performance. I found that in those areas, the 3 out of 9 bars setting seemed to be the sweet spot, even though it can still look a bit worse than the higher options. But, Frame rates are far more important in this case. The tree level of detail setting is self explanatory, with each option gradually affecting image quality and performance. Although the performance impact can be bigger in some areas, even if not a lot of trees are visible. I recommend the 3 out of 4 bars option for the best balance and to be on the safe side. In my testing, the tree draw distance setting controlled the LOD quality of the distant tree billboards, not the distance at which trees appear and disappear, and performance-wise, there seems to be no difference. Just max it out. The grass level of detail setting has the most impact to the image quality and performance. It's clear that the higher options were added in as an extra extra option for PC and weren't really designed with the original game in mind, as they really start to drop frame rates at higher options. It doesn't even matter if you're GPU or CPU bound. And pop-in wise, it looks like the 0 and 1 options have noticeable pop-in, while 2 is a major improvement and starts to become really hard to spot the pop-in from here on out. And the options 3 and higher significantly decrease performance. This is a major setting to turn down for overall improved performance. I recommend the 2 out of 5 bars option for the best balance. For the more GPU limited areas, and I'm using the term GPU limited loosely here, using max settings the frame rate is consistently at around 100 FPS, and using the optimized settings increase the frame rate to the max FPS cap of the game, which is 144 FPS, although with slight dips here and there, and using DLSS quality gains us basically nothing. Now for the part you've been waiting for, the more CPU limited areas, and again, I'm using the term CPU limited loosely here as well, as it's more of a general hardware underutilization issue. Max settings 
averaged around 60 FPS with slight dips into the 50s and the 1% lows reached 49 FPS. It definitely didn't feel as smooth as I expected. Using the optimized settings increased the average FPS to the 70s and 80s with the 1% low dipping to 62 FPS. Now it's finally safe to say that using the optimized settings can achieve a high refresh rate experience, including the worst performing areas in this poorly optimized game.